very good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of KT and Skull. And as always, uh, every weekend, an action-packed sporting show. We'll always have lined up different event, events that have been highlighting the sports world. And uh, today, in studio, we're going to be talking with uh, one Dennis, Dan Okech, uh, sorry, who's an aspirant of Gormaya. He's saying that he has what it takes to take Gormaya where it's supposed to go. I don't know where Gormaya is supposed to go, but you're going to be telling us uh, more about that. Another person, very, very in influential in matters to do with sports fanatism if you talk about sports fanatism you won't miss to mention hesbon or willa a person who actually you wrote a thesis about football yes okay J oh. that's just special it doesn't happen it's not easy <laughs> to find a person who has uh, that heart to do it and passion to do it matters about sports so we have two able people who are going to be telling us uh, some a little bit about what is happening here in the world of sports and remember sevens team very very impressive in hong kong sevens we will be taking a place in the quarterfinals against fiji tomorrow so we'll just be highlighting what has happened in the different matches that we've uh, played yesterday and also today but also of key importance english premier league will Leicester city go all the way and they take that tie kenya premier league gormaya they're saying that we've got two wins now we are chasing the third one but all that and much more in today's edition of ktn scoreline so you have a reason to stay tuned Yeah, actually, after watching this, you will just agree that sportsmen and women all over the world are very, very amazing people. And talking about people who are amazing, the Sevens Shuja team, very, very impressive in day one of the Hong Kong Sevens, securing an important 24 nil victory against Samoa. Today, it was not all that merry for Shuja because we lost our first uh, tie against New Zealand, but it was an impressive 5 nil. So the defense for Ayimba's charges worked out. But uh, we went against France. It was also not an easy tie against France because France secured an important, crucial victory to them, but actually it never aided them because they won't be taking part or in uh, the quarterfinals Kenya we never considered that match because it was 10-17 against France 5-0 against uh, New, New Zealand actually we lost but against uh, Samoa we used our ch chances and had a 24-0 advantage so let's take a look a look, a look uh, rather at what transpired in day two of Hong Kong sevens Tim Shuja goes and plays half back New Zealand down to six players because one of them's on the ground injured but it's out to Forbes Forbes 
Forbes for the line. Forbes scores. DJ Forbes, 137th try in his career. And talk about a captain's knock. It couldn't have come at a better time. We're using all that experience from those tournaments. DJ Forbes keeping the width. They shifted it. Tatamaki has come on and been involved. Good pass by Gillies Kaka, realizing where the space was. DJ Forbes, outstanding. Ball is there, picked up. This should be the first try for France, and it is. Sacha Belleau scores his second try in Hong Kong in 2016. So it's a good scrum from the French. Belenia gets it out to Vakatawa. You want to stay on the inside of this man because he'll score or he'll create a try. And Vakatawa does it just like that. Try number 46. Something special when he touches the ball. Kayange Humphrey Kayange did well to make the tackle and get to his feet to play it. It takes about four meters in front of the ref. Yeah, they tap and go on Monday. And this is Oyu. Oyu is going to come back for Kenya. They had to score first to stay competitive, and they've been rewarded for the pressure they've put on. Yeah, great defensive pressure. Bakatao, he releases that ball. It's a try for France. Get this patient play. Velour. Perez again. Lugel. Bakatao is just standing there saying, give me the ball again. Can they stop on this occasion? Beats the first. Ball is there better than field. Perez has it. Perez scores. I think he's got it on the line. I think he's got it down too, Willie. There it is, confirmation. The left. Otieno. Otieno can't get rid of Delenia. Pick and go here from William Barker. Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid's over. Too much power. And William Barker. Very, very impressive, Ayimba there has uh, make, uh, just, just transformed this side and he is actually missing some of the key players. The likes of Billy was not in that uh, tie. That was William Baker and the commentator was just uh, not so right with that. Just that team, what do you expect? Tomorrow we're taking on Fiji and Fiji, they have been very, very impressive in, uh, throughout this campaign. I think it's a big match against Fiji, a powerhouse in, 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 in rugby. And, uh, you know, it's those kinds of games that players thrive on. High pressure, big game, you want to do your best because it will, you know, ebb your, your, your name into the history. And, uh, I mean, you can't ask for more. Mm -hmm. And you beat Fiji, you're in the same. It can only get better. Mm -hmm. you, you agree on that? Uh, yeah, I agree on that. Uh, I see Fiji as Samoa. Mm -hmm. And uh, by beating Samoa 24-0, mm -hmm. I think we are going to replicate that. In fact, we are going to beat Fiji 35-0. <laughs> because uh, the, I, I don't know how... Ayimba ticks with this team. Uh, he just knows the buttons to press. Mm. The same old players were not performing with Mike Friday. Mm. Same old players who could not perform earlier. And they're doing very well. And I think we're going to the semis tomorrow. I, I, I just wish that it is going to be real and we're going to secure that 35 mil against Fiji. But yes. any person who loves rugby as I do <laughs> will say that one is a mountain that will be climbing. And just talking about Fiji and how impressive they have been. We don't know what will transpire. But still talking about teams that have been impressive matters the English Premier League. West Ham started their tie very, very impressively against Arsenal, securing an important 2 0 victory in the opening match. And now Arsenal is saying we are, a, we are on a revenge mission and we are going to do better. But this time round, we are doing it away. We'll, we have what it takes to go on up, uh, and, and beat that. Also, uh, Chelsea, very, very crucial tie against Swansea. But looking at the stats, Swansea has never won a tie against Chelsea when they are playing at home. They have an advantage playing at, uh, away. But today, will Chelsea have what it takes? to secure a victory against Swansea playing uh, away because Chelsea will away. So let's take a look at the preview of the English Premier League matches that have been lined up for uh, today. It's actually a yes, yes, they'll do it to many. Do you think they will win the title? Six matches to go. I actually placed a bet that uh, Leicester will not finish in the top four. I'll reduce a bit and give them <laughs> top four. But for the championship, it's still a no, 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 no. Six games. It's After seeing what Leicester's done, no, no, and we've been no, having no, this no. talk saying they, they can't do it, they the, might do it, they won't do it, but you, you're still holding up, they won't do it. They won't do it. They've had some lucky moments, uh, many penalty calls. But those lucky moments win the matches. They don't last forever. Yeah, exactly. But, but they don't last forever. Will, they, will, will, they Leicester, as, Esbon, will Leicester win the... Uh, you the, know, the, the uh, let me say time. this. Uh, as an Arsenal fan, I would love for Arsenal to win, and if they can't win, I would go with Leicester. But if they win this weekend's game against Sunderland, mm -hmm. 
I'm sure they'll win. Look at what they did last season. I mean, they had momentum going to the end yeah. of the season. You know, mm -hmm. they won uh, uh, seven games, you know, and they survived the drop. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at uh, what, what Claudio Ranieri has done, he has mm -hmm. given them confidence. I, I mean, the way Mares is playing, the way Vardy is playing, the way... Uh, guys from the bench come in and change the course of the game. It's mm -hmm. kind of impressive. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at all the departments, their striking force is actually adventurous. They do things that you wouldn't expect them to do and they get away with it. Mm -hmm. But then they do that because they have the lenses. In their midfield, they have two great players who I think are the unsung heroes. Danny Drinkwater and Golo Kante, That's you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What they do is that, that they work hard, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And their defensive duties gives Mares, Vardy and Okazaki mm -hmm. the freedom to do what they want to do with the ball. Mm -hmm. with, with the ball. Vardy is and then, 29, eh? So and he, he's been playing all the time and we didn't really know about Vardy. So you really wonder what spike they just had this season. I mean, but now it's, it's, it's a dream that um, they, they are soon to wake up and they'll wake up with that title. I, I mean, you guys have been saying that they are favourites <laughs> until they win, and I, I want to buy that. Mm -hmm. They are favourites until they win. I mm -hmm. can't say that they're going to win it. Mm -hmm. But I think having said that, I mean, 18 points is, 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 is uh, a lot of points in football, you mm -hmm. know. From here, just like what happened to Arsenal the other time when Galas remained on the pitch, they mm -hmm. can play draws. Mm -hmm. And if they just play two draws, that confidence you is go. deflated. Mm -hmm. And that is the beauty of football, that you can't predict and there's no transitivity. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that West Ham beat us at, at Emirates does not mean that now at, at Upton Park they'll, they'll, they'll beat, beat us. Mm -hmm. And Leicester draws, Arsenal wins, Tottenham wins. It changes the dynamics completely. Mm -hmm. yes. Changes the dynamics. But you mentioned about Drinkwater actually is leading in uh, the number of completed passes. He has actually 1,263, and that is a 71%. But looking at uh, N'Golo Kante, very, very impressive in uh, winning the balls, uh, spoiling the balls, and his pass accuracy at 82%. So the two very, very instrumental in that mid, uh, midfield. And also the back line is doing uh, them uh, great. Look at what uh, Huth is, is, is doing. Look at what Hughes is also doing on the other side. So you might say it's a complete team, but yeah. let's wait and see. Six matches tomorrow, they play Sunderland. But what other teams will uh, be uh, spicing the soccer menu today? Actually, West Ham against Arsenal. I don't know what's your bet on, on, on this. Um, uh, that is straightforward. It's an Arsenal win. Uh, they are you, you, you call that straightforward? That is straightforward. I mean, with all due respect to West Ham, uh, they have a very good team. Mm -hmm. They're actually fighting for top four, mm -hmm. but Arsenal is way, way better than... Oh, will you? Uh, yeah, I, I think I like what Bilic has done with West Ham. Uh, and... Uh, I would say that they have players to win the game for them, but mm -hmm. the pressure will be on them. Playing mm -hmm. at home is not easy, mm -hmm. especially against a big uh, side like Arsenal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's theirs to lose. Mm -hmm. Arsenal will play with some freedom, and I'm sure Arsenal will win. I'm mm, sure Arsenal will win, but it won't be easy. Yes. May I just remember how the season began mm -hmm. and what happened to Arsenal. And we were saying <laughs> Arsenal near. will do it and they'll do it. So yeah. let's wait and see if they'll have what it takes mm -hmm. to dance against the Western charges. Aston Villa against Bournemouth. Aston Villa has been very, very much struggling. Mm -hmm. So will they have what it takes again to go all the way and secure maximum points playing at home against Bournemouth? Crystal Palace will be hosting Norwich. Also, Norwich has not been that uh, uh, fresh looking at the last uh, matches. Crystal Palace on the other side is Say they have a point to prove. So the Ampton, actually, they gave Leicester City uh, three important points, and people are saying mm. Southampton wanted to take. I mean, it was a disappointment, man. You, you can't yeah. do that. You can't uh, fail to turn up like horrible. they did. Uh, you know, horrible. for the integrity of uh. the league, I think this is one game they needed not to lose. But they gave Leicester three, three, three important points. 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 Now Leicester still uh, having the bragging uh. lights, but now Newcastle. One what do you expect with this, Rafa Benitez? Well, I think it's not working out for Rafael Benitez, and uh, I'm not seeing them, you know, doing any better. Mm -hmm. If they get a draw, they'll be lucky. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I see Benitez winning this game. Uh, he's, a, he's a good manager, and uh, I think he's nearly, he's barely played two, two games with the team. Mm -hmm. And by third, fourth game, he should be picking up, mm -hmm. and this is the game. He should be picking up, and yeah. actually he mm -hmm. said that his uh, players are fighting them, they're giving their all, so they have what it takes. Maybe they're going to surprise some Southampton playing at home. Other matches, very, very uh, key matches, Swan Swansea City will be playing against uh, Chelsea. Remember, Swansea City have never won a match at home playing against Chelsea. So Chelsea have an advantage playing uh, against Swansea when they are away. Watford will be entertaining Everton. Also not an easy time. Manchester City, they secured an important uh, two-all draw against PSG, and that is in the Champions League sector. But against West Brom, what do you expect in that match? Um, it's, it's, it's going to be a Man City win. Uh, as much as they are struggling in the Premier League, but uh, I think they are way better than West Brom, and mm -hmm. the pressures are on. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they're going to win that game. 
with. Will uh, it be easy for yeah, Man City? Yeah, it will be very easy for Man City. I think West Brom have not been very good on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see them getting anything out of this. Mm -hmm. Saying that they don't see anything getting uh, hmm. uh, any points uh, from that, so let's wait and see if Manchester I wish you could City. We could have talked about the Swansea game, mm -hmm. uh, it's a very big game. And uh, Gomez, I see him do it again, like he does so it we'll again. Get the Gomez. <laughs> He'll crawl <laughs> <laughs> this evening, but but Chelsea have an advantage of playing uh, against Swansea, so will mm. history uh, stick to its uh, books, or we're going to have something? Yeah, yeah apart from history, I think uh, Chelsea have it easy, they have nothing to lose, there's no mm. pressure for fighting for the championship, they're already mm. out. Mm -hmm. So there's that composure in the way they play, and then they have new big um, players coming in. Mm. Uh, we saw Pato the other day. Mm terrific goals and I think he has you know that 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 psych and they would win this uh, the coach Guzidin knowing that he, it's uh, just a few matches for him to be out I mean it's unfortunate because I thought they should have given him the job mm -hmm. I just thought that so you would take Conte does not deserve to be uh, well the head coach uh, of this you know it's, it's it's a gamble just like you brought Mourinho back expecting things to work mm -hmm. Uh, and then they didn't work. So how many coaches are you going to sack before you study the ship? If Chelsea yeah. had not gotten rid of Ranieri in 2004, mm -hmm. there would be a big team today. Because mm -hmm. he had done a marvelous job. You seem to agree on that. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Mm -hmm. In fact, Hiddink deserves the job. Mm -hmm. He's done it before. He was brought half season the other time. He did very well. He left. And this is another time. I, th I thought they would give him the job this time around. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he's not getting that job and just asking how many times uh, we're going to be seeing uh, different Chelsea coaches. coaches. Abramovic is now yeah. counting and it's 10 maybe. Yeah. Next season we're going to get some other uh, differences and go to 11, 12. But uh, for that tie, let's wait to see. But also local soccer menu. We have a lot that will be happening in the Kenyan Premier League. Remember, Tasca FC are currently topping the Kenya Premier League log, but today we'll be having different matches. The FC Leopards will be going on and playing against uh, Sofa Parker, and that tie actually is supposed to... Uh, I think it's currently on because it was an early kickoff, a two o'clock kick kickoff. So I don't know, uh, what, what is your prediction? Sofa Parker have been very, very much struggling. And something impressive about Sofa Parker, uh, a tactician, and that is uh, David. Yesterday he led the Harambe Starlets in an African qualifier uh, tie two against two Algeria. Away, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, secured an important 2-2 two -two all draw. So Sofa Parker against FC Leopards, your prediction? Um, with all due respect to Sofa Parker, I think it's a Leopards win. Uh, they have a good team. They, they, they have a, a young team mm -hmm. that can play together, mm -hmm. and I think they're just going to be so apaka. They've been struggling, just one win the whole season, mm -hmm. they'll lose this game again. I think Leopards have been good, mm -hmm. uh, apart from the loss against City Stars, mm -hmm. they've, they've been terrific. Mm -hmm. I would go for a Leopards win. Actually, in the Leopards lineup uh, today, Katarega will be starting on the bench, but let's uh, uh, see after 90 minutes how that tie is going to pan out. Kakamega Homeboys, they've been struggling. They secured a 3 nil loss against Gormaya. Before that, it was a 2-1 loss against uh, FC Leopards. Today, they're going up against uh, City Stars. City Stars, Bobby Ogola, former uh, assistant coach in uh, Gormaya's uh, uh, charges, very, very impressive and he's transforming mm -hmm. this team. So maybe they never had a coach of uh, that caliber who will enable them to get the good. So right now it's working for them, but for how long will it work under Bobby Ogola's uh, uh, charges? Western Steamer will be up against Tasca. Tasca FC have been very, very impressively just looking at their record. Four wins and only two draws. Just they have a statement that they are currently on the top of that log, having accumulated a total of 14 points. And they are leading actually on the other uh, side of uh, goal scoring because uh, currently on 12 goals uh, that they have uh, scored. So very impressive for them. Matari United again is Sonny Sugar. Kimanzi actually came with a statement and he led uh, them for quite a number of time without losing a tie before they went down again to City Stars. So uh, this time around, it's a team to watch, but they'll be up against Sony Sugar. I don't know what we expect. Madari United against Sony Sugar. Um, Madari is a good team. They have a good coach in Kimanzi. And um, yes, they've not done so well previous against City Stars. Mm -hmm. But Madari will win this game. You agree on that? I think they'll win, though mm -hmm. uh, I would wish for a draw, mm -hmm. given that I'm a Sony <laughs> Sugar supporter. <laughs> Uh, okay, Obadi yeah. Ndege will be there just haunting <laughs> Sony Sugar Chargers. Currently, he's the lead top scorer for Madari United, having yeah. five goals. So, will he have the boots to score goals against Sony Sugar? So, those are some of the ties that will be played today. But also, on Sunday, we have also impressive matches. Poster Rangers against Ulinzi Stars. Currently, Ulinzi Stars, the only team in the Kenya Premier League uh, the 2016 season that has not lost even a single match. Thika United, they got a blow against uh, God Maya in the midweek. will be up against Chamil Sugar. Moroni against Bandari. Last year, actually, Moroni against Bandari, first leg, it was a 3-1. Second leg, 1-0. And 
at the Go TV, it was a 4 1 all in favor of Bandari. But this time round, will that change and maybe Moroni secure a much needed victory against Bandari? Gormaya against Ushuru. Pause. No, I have to do that. <laughs> that's the game. Just because you're here. Uh, I've watched Gormaya. I watched them against the um, um, homeboys in, in Mumias mm -hmm. and I watched Afghanistan Tika. This team is picking up and uh, believe you me, Ushuru are in problems. Mm -hmm. They'll be beaten thoroughly. Do you agree on that? Yeah, I agree totally. I mean, they have the goals. They're getting the game going. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult to stop the strike force. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Just as I was saying that it's going to be difficult to stop the strike for the, of, of, of Gormaya, Jacques Twisenge, four million sign and uh, uh, sign, signing fee, and now people are saying he what? actually worth that uh, tie because he's, he scored two goals against the United. Not just two goals, uh, he's, he's, he's scored. Uh, he's now he's on three goals. Three goals and yeah. an assist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he tells uh, you how much a strike. Yeah, his work. movement, his mm -hmm. timing is at the right place at the right time. I mm -hmm. think he's, 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 he's a good, he's a yeah. good striker. He's worth the money. Mm -hmm. But the season is still long, mm. so he has to live up to the expectation. Season is still long, yeah. he has to live up to the expectation. So just some of the matches that have been lined up in uh, Saturday and also Sunday as uh, Kenya Premier League uh, 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 fixes. But now we're going to be taking a short break. But when we come back, one person who's very, very interested in what Gormai is doing, that is uh, Dan Okech, and he's saying that, you know what, Rachir has had his time. Now I need also to have my time at least to change one or two things in that Gormaya's outfit. We don't know what Okech will uh, be saying, why he thinks that the elections of Gormaya needed to be have done by last year? Yes, uh, January, December. January, December. Yes. So he's going to be telling us more about that. But still, we'll ask him, and he needs also to explain to the people that he's saying that needs to vote for him. Why should people vote for him? And Rachel seems to be providing the goods. So that and much more after this short break. What you made me to look what I made for you. Knew if I paid my dues, how will they pay you? When you first come in the game, they try to play you. Then you drive a couple of hits, look how they wait to you. From RC to Madison Square. So the only thing that matters is just a matter of years. As fate will have it, J status appears. The B at an all-time high. Perfect time to say goodbye. When I come back like Joy, we in the four-five. It ain't to play games with you. It's to aim at you. Probably mean you. If I owe you, I'm blowing you to slivering. Except I'll take one for your team. And I need you to remember one. One thing. one thing, I came, I saw, I conquered, a record sale, sold out concert, it's month, you want this encore, I need you to scream to your lungs to soar, come on. I'm tired of being what you want me to be, feeling so faithless, lost under the surface, don't know what you're expecting of me, but under the pressure of walking Welcome back, and if you're joining us now, it's uh, Katie and Colin, and you've missed a lot if you're joining us now in the first uh, part where you're talking about matters, international soccer, local soccer, a lot that is just happening in the different uh, spheres of the sporting world. And now, we just shift gears, and we talk matters Gormaya, because we have one person here who is Dan Okech, who's saying that he has what it takes, and he wants to be the leader, the chairman of Gormaya Football Club. 
maybe we need to know God has been impressive 2015 2014 2015 they went they took that tie and that is the Kenya Premier League title without losing even a single match and that is a statement some other people are saying that Cherry is delivering the goods some other people are saying no 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 when my kid Eight years ago, started class one. Now he's in class eight. We, we need to go to form one with a different person. Dan Ketch is one of the uh, people who are the carriers of that philosophy. Um, not one of, but the person. <laughs> uh, I work for a, a cooperative society, and um, elections are held every year. Whether you declare 60% dividends or 5% dividends, uh, elections are constitutional processes which mm -hmm. must happen. Mm -hmm. Whether you're doing very well or very poorly, they must happen. For Gormaya, our constitution says that every two years we should have an election. Mm -hmm. The last one was held in December 2013, it aborted, it was finally held in January 2014. Mm -hmm. And therefore in January 2016, we were two years and we were due for elections. Mm -hmm. And therefore, not about Dan or anything else, Gormaya was due for elections in January. It's overdue now and it should be held mm -hmm. with no explanation, no excuse, no nothing. Whether we're doing very well or very poorly, mm -hmm. it's a constitutional process that is due mm -hmm. and it must be performed. I, I don't know what you take because I've had uh, Ambrose Rechia say that, uh, uh, you know, we had to comply with the Sports Act 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had one year just to mm -hmm. uh, put mm -hmm. our house mm -hmm. in office. Mm -hmm. So 2014, now we start counting from 2014. Mm -hmm. Now we're supposed to be now in, in office the up to until somewhere like the 2017. The Sports Act came into effect in 2013, actually, even before we did our last election. But a lot of clubs did not comply yes. to that Sports Act. Unfortunately, Gormaya to date has not complied. And therefore, an excuse that let's comply first, then do elections mm -hmm. in, uh, in, at the end of the year mm -hmm. is a very big excuse to mm -hmm. give somebody an illegal uh, hooping year in office. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't make sense anywhere. It cannot count anywhere. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is to do an election mm -hmm. and comply mm -hmm. or comply and do an election. Mm -hmm. Either way, whichever comes first, there's no problem. We are due and overdue for elections. Mm -hmm. It should be done now. Yes, Bono Willa, you now you're on the other side of the yeah. fence. A Sony Sugar fan. For the first time, I'm having a Sony Sugar yeah. avid fan in studio. I don't know what you take in all this quagmire that uh, the Gurmaya Football Club I think is having. In the recent what past. what what uh, is happening probably should be situated broadly, because mm -hmm. I don't think it's so much about the election as it is about the aftermath of the election. Because mm -hmm. uh, if we call for an election and then we are put in such a situation again where people have to demand for that election mm -hmm. to be unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So if, if uh, Ambrose Lachier, and he's done a good job, I must say, mm -hmm. is of the opinion that they need to put their house in order and have an election, mm -hmm. then there needs to be timeline and communication that this is what you're doing and this is when you're going to have the elections mm -hmm. so that the focus should not be on the election. The focus should be on how to take the club forward mm -hmm. so that the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the aspirants who want to take over from Lachier mm -hmm. Don't focus on replacing him. Mm -hmm. They focus on what they'll do that will take Gormaya mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. And I think it's high time. I mean, he has done a great job for the last eight years, mm -hmm. but there's nothing refreshing. You know, God has won, you know, unprecedentedly mm -hmm. uh, the championship without losing any, any game. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to move forward and take the passion from the fans mm -hmm. to something that would make the club self-sustaining. Because mm -hmm. at one point, I think I already say that, you know, I've, I've invested so much in this club. I was with this club when, when it didn't have money. No one called for, no one was demanding for an election. Now there's money coming in. People are demanding for an election, mm -hmm. which may be misplaced, you know. But he has that to use because when there was no money, people are not interested. Mm -hmm. But we need to run away from that and ensure that uh, no club is dependent on an individual, mm -hmm. you know. Because if you have a big club like Gorma dependent on the club president or the club chairman, mm -hmm. I mean, it's unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. Yeah. Don't, don't, um, okay, uh, I don't know if you agree to those That's the biggest segments. problem. And something just, uh, yeah. just before you, mm. you uh, react to that, uh, he's saying that the issue about hooliganism, mm. that is an unfinished business that he's not leaving that office before he settles it. And, and is uh, money the drive that is uh, taking you to yeah. say that you uh, want to I've, I've not seen that? any definite steps being taken to kill hooliganism. Mm. Uh, one of the things I want to do is to kill it completely. Mm. And... Uh, I think uh, we've won the league and beaten mm -hmm. uh, the last three seasons. Mm -hmm. We did it in, 17, in 1976. Mm -hmm. It means it's not unique. We've won the league three times in a row this time round, and we did it again in the 80s. In the 80s, we actually went ahead and won a continental championship. Mm -hmm. And therefore, whatever we're doing now, we're replicating what we've done before. So what are we going to celebrate at 50 years? Mm -hmm. We Gormai will be 50 in 2018. It's not about, just like you mentioned, it's not just about replacing Mr. Ambrose Rachia. Mm -hmm. I've worked with him, I know how well he's done for the club, mm -hmm. but we can do much better. Mm -hmm. And what do we mean by better? 
Gormaya, as we speak, does not have a stadium. It looks far-fetched, looks ridiculous. A lot of clubs uh, in the country. And don't uh, have not their in the country. Uh, Gormaya is the best in the country. In mm -hmm. fact, Gormaya should be the first one to have a stadium in the country. Mm -hmm. Look at KCC and Uganda, very small club. I mean, by all standards, the Ugandan economy and Kenyan economy. Mm -hmm. Ugandan economy, with all these respects, is an Nairobi economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can afford to have a, a stadium for their club. I don't want to mention our, our, our peers like mm -hmm. Tipi Mazembe mm -hmm. and Zamalek, Al Ali, mm, El Merek. It's, it's shameful comparing Gormaya to those clubs. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when the coach came, he was shocked. We don't even have a gym. Gorma doesn't have a clubhouse. We, we don't have nothing. We are borrowing a training ground from Camp Toyoyo, a CDF-funded training ground. I mean, CDF economy is worth Gormaya's one game. Uh, how can we depend on such a small economy to give us a training ground where we pay per day? Mm -hmm. A Gormaya that we deserve must be self-sufficient, should be supporting itself without any donation from a politician, mm. without any dependence on somebody. In fact, when I came out that I wanted to stand in as a chair, uh, the biggest question I was being asked around, because by that time, there was no sponsorship. The biggest question is, was that, do you have the money? Because in Gormaya, you must have your own cash to run the club. It was, it was ridiculous, but anyway, I had to answer. You should not depend on an individual. You should not depend. Gormaya should sustain and support itself. What do I mean? Look at Gormaya's merchandise. Gormaya's merchandise is worth billions of shillings. And let's talk figures. Mm -hmm. Kisumu alone, and if you do a very serious... I went to Kisumu. For example, Kisumu has 10 branches. Mm -hmm. And every household in Kisumu, there is a Gormaya fan. And I told them, why can't you give us, sell these clothes in every door? Just do a door-to-door -door sale for our merchandise. I'm talking about the jersey only. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the kofias, the pants, the scarves. Just talk about the official merchandise, the jersey. Mm -hmm. If you sell it in every household and push that product in a massive campaign, you, you can sell more than 500,000 units. Mm -hmm. And selling 500,000 units in Kisumu translates basically, multiplied by 1,000, to 500 million Kenya shillings. That is the sale of merchandise only. In Kisumu, Sijaongea about Nairobi, where we have Madare, we have Kasabuni, we have Kibira, we have Kayole. We, we have massive following for Gormaya, not even Lord or Mombasa or Nakuru. Mm -hmm. So merchandise alone should go to Gormaya Abi. Mm -hmm. but no jokes, yeah. very serious figures. Mm -hmm. The only thing you need is to just track it a little. Now, are you saying that Ambrose Rachel is failing? Ama, he has failed for a, a, a number of times. Um, I, I don't really like talking about an individual, mm -hmm. but the office has totally failed. I've been there before, I've seen So we say happens. the office under the watch of, of the Richard. current chair has not done so well. We've been depending on donations. Unfortunately, fans have been called to do arambes. Fans have been called individually to give donations direct to the office. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. A club of Gormaya's caliber should not do that. Mm -hmm. A good example, Gormaya's expenditure per year is 55 million, barely 60 million per year. And that is full, full, full. Everyone is paid, everyone is happy. We've gone for continental and we're back. We won, failed. Full, 60 million. Gormaya has 15 home games in a season. A Gormaya's home game in Kisumu should give Gormaya 5 million. And I would put five games in Kisumu. That is a basic 25 million Kenya shillings from the gates. Mm -hmm. Talk about Gormaya home games in Nairobi. Unfortunately, I'll mention this. When you go to Machakos against Wapaka, they get 2.9, 2.7 million. And we come to see the stadium, a bigger crowd, we get 1.2 or even 800. That's how ping 1.7 plus lost in one game. Mm -hmm. And these things can translate into millions of shillings. Mm -hmm. Ten home games, uh, just uh, uh, before, uh, ten home games mm -hmm. in Nairobi should give Gormaya 3 million. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about 25 plus 30. That means gate collections only mm -hmm. should give Gormaya 55 million. And wait, mm -hmm. we, are to, we are not talking about the derby between God and FC. That is a game you should market for one month. If you attended Koroga Festival, you realize that you only printed your ticket at the gates. It was scanned. Mm -hmm. Even if somebody photocopies it, the first person to present it would get in. Uh, Esbon, I don't know if you agree agreeing on that. I, I, want, I, want, I want to agree with Dan to some extent uh -huh. and also point out that, you know, I, I think uh, this has been said again and again. Uh, and it's never uh, been done. And, and it has never been done. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. if you look at it critically, is, is that enough to sustain, uh, 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 you know, a club mm -hmm. is it enough if you're going to sell merchandise if you're going to uh, get go, get collection from kisumu and nairobi mm -hmm. is, and it, is it yeah is it, is it gonna be enough mm -hmm. uh, and, and i think that's that's the point of departure we need to think outside that you know we need to start thinking of how are we going to harness the gormaya 
funds into something that is more sustainable. Because if you're going to buy a jersey uh, in the Kenyan economy, you're not mm -hmm. going to buy it every season. And if you're going to buy it every season, it means that the percentage is going to reduce considerably. Mm -hmm. And that is, is in, in itself needs to be done because it will generate revenue. Mm -hmm. But I'm just thinking of how, because most clubs actually don't depend on gate collection. Yeah. You know, but they depend on that fan being in the stadium, mm -hmm. watching the game live. Because mm -hmm. that's where the money com comes in from. Because no, no, no sponsor would want to sponsor a team and their product or service, you know, mm -hmm. is not getting an extra potential client. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we, th th there's a way in which we are afraid of talking about this. But uh, whoever is coming in needs to address the issue of funds, mm -hmm. needs to try and turn that passion into some sort of income. And at, at some point, uh, I think there's uh, a think coach who mentioned that he has never seen a club with so, so much, much passion. uh, passionate fans, so many passionate fans and in the nothing. entire Africa. And you look, at, look at what is, is happening elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to think outside the box and turn these guys into responsible funds. Let them own the club. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think, Hesbon, uh, there's something I was mentioning that I, I, I didn't finish. Eh? Mm -hmm. I'll finish uh, the first part of Get Collections, a game for God versus FC Leopards. Should leave us over 20 million. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? Make, sell this game for one month. Mm -hmm. Advertise the game for an entire month. Publicize the game. Get people to buy the tickets online. Give them discounts for Ali, the Ali bird. Mm -hmm. Give them some catch. And then by the time it reaches the match day, it's sold out. Mm -hmm. 60,000 fans who shall have bought the ticket for God versus FC Kasarani. Mm -hmm. And that will give you, can, can give you 20 million, one game. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can do. Now, he mentioned the part of having the fans be part and parcel of the club. How would you kill hooliganism? There's only one way out. Mm -hmm. Let them feel that this club is theirs. How do you do this? First, have them be members of the club through a third membership drive. And there are things we've tried, we mentioned before, nobody has followed them up. I'm talking about having a membership drive countrywide. Mm -hmm. I, I had this vision, and I even shared with the office, of doing a membership drive that will give us one million members. Mm -hmm. And hello, the, the potential sponsor has said, mm -hmm. no, we'll give you three million. We've done it before. So getting three million members at 100 shillings per year mm -hmm. for membership, mm -hmm. that would give a Goromaya straightforward 300 million. Let, let me cut you there, and uh, yes. Esbon, I just bring you in, uh, in a little bit as we wind up this conversation. Mm. What do you expect from a, a, a chairperson of any football club in the country, not only here in Kenya? Just, just, just all I, I think, you know, the chairperson of any football club should basically be the face of, of that club, you know. And whatever they believe in, their values should trickle down all the way to the fans. Mm. So much so that they attract investors. Mm. They attract uh, good players. Because, you know, players ultimately play for the fans and the club. Mm -hmm. and, and we've had players who don't want to play for certain chairmen, for certain presidents. So you want a chairman who would run the club, yeah. who would not make the club dependent on him. Because uh, yeah. that is unfortunate. Because mm -hmm. if a club is dependent on a chairman, it's worse than an institutional club that can mm -hmm. be closed down in a board meeting. Because mm -hmm. if it is an individual, it doesn't need a board meeting. Mm -hmm. You just it's need to say, a sentence, I'm no longer there and it's gone. Mm -hmm. At least in a board meeting, Guys, I'm saying that you know maintaining these uh, community clubs, you know, is, is is the key thing for Kenyan football. Mm -hmm. But now we need to think of maintaining them without personality cards, mm -hmm. so that this club in itself can sustain itself. And do you think you're that person for Gormaya? Um, 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 I am that person for Gormaya. One because uh, I'm a passionate fan for Gormaya. The passion I have for the club is very big, and it's not about passion. It's passion with a cause. Because I know very well that currently the way when you treat our players, it's mm -hmm. unfortunate. Mm -hmm. You play a big game and you carry your bag home into a matatu. Mm -hmm. You're sweating, you're tired, you force your way out of the stadium into a matatu to go home. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. If a player gets injured, they're dropped at Kenyatta and left there. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to build these people. These are the people who make us win games. You need to build these people. Yeah. People are making us win those games. So there's a lot that needs to be done in different, just making this uh, club do so. There's a lot that I think this conversation, we are going to be having it another time, but mm. uh, still in the matters of sports, mm. for the interest of the, uh, those people who love boxing, they call this as the last fight. Manny Pacquiao will be up against uh, uh, Bradley in uh, the last fight that he's going to be taking in his career before he goes to Philippines and just go and start to do matters politics. So 
Pacquiao said that he has what it takes to go and win that match, and he's been training very, very hard, just uh, saying that you cannot go down when you're fighting your last match. So we're just uh, the uh, images that you're going to be seeing, those are the, the, uh, him weighing in. Weighing in. And now the both, the both fighters weighed in uh, as a scheduled 12 round bout with the Filipino Pacquiao tipping the scales at uh, 145.5 pounds, and that is about uh, 65.9 kilograms. American Bradley on the other side weighing in just a pound heavier than Pacquiao at 146.5 uh, uh, pounds, that is uh, 66.5 uh, 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 kilograms. So uh, this will be the last uh, fight. And uh, Pacquiao very impressively just uh, shifting his uh, uh, interest in the world of sports and now he's saying, I am a politician, I need to be a politician, my people back at home need to also uh, get uh, some other uh, Big, big uh, responsibility and um, hard work. Still matters boxing. One very, very impressive Charles Martin will be up against Anthony Joshua. And now this one is matters to do with heavyweights. Now, when you talk about heavyweights, they're very, very impressive people that we'll always remember in the world of heavyweights. But now we have two that are saying, at this time, we are the best and we will be the best. A tie that is scheduled for two, uh, day at night. Take a look. What do we expect in this uh, tie? And they call them the king of knockouts. There's been a lot of people calling Anthony Joshua out, claiming they want to fight him, and uh, so we need to find out which of those are real. Kings of Knockouts, last one as we finish the show. Um, uh, I would like to urge Gormaya fans to turn up tomorrow for the game and uh, cheer the win against Ushuru. Mm -hmm. I want to urge them to passionately and respectfully call for elections without any abuse to the current office. Uh, maybe uh, I would like to implore upon Gormaya fans uh, it's about time. Uh, there are so many young uh, and eligible leaders within the Goma fraternity who have done so much for the club. Uh, I don't know whether I'm allowed to mention names, but they know them. Mm -hmm. And now that they're going up for an election, they should start thinking of people who will take this club to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Taking the clubs to the next level and taking sports in general to the next level. A lot needs to be done, not only for Gormaya, but all the clubs that are taking part in not only the uh, the, the big tire league in uh, the country but also the FKFPL and uh, just trying to build and nurture the different sporting talents that we have in the country. Now that's where we end up with today's edition of KTN, Sco uh, KTN Scoreline, almost said KTN Prime 9 o'clock uh, sports news so 
just used to it. But do stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll also have a lot that will be lined up for you. Matters sports, and it's always at KTN News. My name is Moses Wakisi. Have a lovely afternoon.